Hello, I hope you are doing good and uh, at the best of your health. Today, uh, we are going to talk about uh, a chapter from our English grammar which basically deals with subject and verb. I will write a sentence. Yeah. You can see there is a sentence which is like this He is a boy Now, he is a boy is a sentence which is making a sense Right? Now, in this sentence if I ask you to figure out or to find out the subject Can you tell me which is the subject here? The subject over here is he And if I ask you to figure out or point out or find out the word in this sentence you will definitely say is is the word over here. Yes. Right. Now, in a sentence, there are various things that basically frames a sentence. When we talk about this, we come across a term called clauses. Clauses is that part of the sentence which consists of a subject and a Word. Right. A sentence which will have a subject and a verb is known as to be a clauses. Don't get confused. Yes, sentence and clauses are there or clauses is a part of the sentence. Clause alone cannot be a whole sentence or even if it makes, then also it will be called as a sentence. For example, over here if we see what is the sentence, he is a boy and there is a combination of the subject and a Word. So therefore, this is known as to be a clauses. Now, in clauses, there are two types. Number one, dependent. And the other one is independent. There are two different types of clauses. One is dependent clause and the other one is independent. Independent clause are the ones which alone makes a meaningful sentence. Like in this sentence, if you see, he is a boy and this makes a proper sense. It doesn't need anything to depend upon this sentence. So therefore, this kind of clause is known as to be a, an independent clause. Whenever there is a combination of subject and verb in a part of the sentence or in the whole sentence, then it is considered to be clause. Now, what happens? Many clause together makes one sentence. This is the basic difference between clause and sentences. There can be one clause in a sentence, there can be more than one clause in a sentence. Now, when two or more clauses put together and makes a complete sentence, then it is known as to be sentence. Further, we can find out the clauses which are present in this sentence. Let us see this part of the sentence. Even if I was unwell. Now if I tell you, is it a clause or it can be an independent sentence? So in order to find out, first what we have to do, I told you we have to find the subject and what combination is there or not. Yes, in this part of the sentence, you can see or it is that this is the subject of the sentence and this is the word of the sentence. So therefore, from here to here is actually one clause. Next part of the sentence when we go, I went to his house is another part of the sentence which is another clause of the sentence. How? Here I is the subject and when is the verb. Okay, so you see this is another part of the sentence. Because 
Why did he go to his house? Because he invited me. Because he invited me. Where we see he is the subject present here. Invited is the verb present here. So therefore, what we can draw, there are three clauses in this sentence. Now, out of these three, we have to identify which one is dependent and which is, which one is independent. Very interestingly, if you segregate these three parts of the sentence or three clauses, you will be able to identify. For example, because he invited me. Is it making a complete sense? Because he invited me. It is not making a complete sense. So therefore, it falls under the category of dependent clause. It is not making dependent clause because it is not making a proper or a correct sense. Now next, when we talk about this part of the sentence, I went to his house. Now let us go to the first part. Even if I was unwell, is it making a proper sense or is there anything left? Are you asking any question after reading this part of the sentence? Even if I was well. So what? There are certain questions which are coming. So whenever there is such question, those clauses are known as to be dependent clause. See, over here it is not completely answering or it is not completely giving you a proper sense. So therefore, this clause is a dependent clause. Now let us go to the middle part or the other part of the sentence. I went to his house. If I take out this and write it separately, I went to his house. I went to his house. And I put a full stop. It is making a complete sense. So therefore, this clause is not dependent on any of the other part of the sentence. So therefore, this is an independent clause. So this is how we segregate the dependent and the independent clause. Further, as I told you, dependent and independent, both of these clauses are further classified into various categories. Dep dependent clause, what happens in that? In that, there are few more clauses that comes, that is noun clause, adjective clause and adverb 